Hi everybody, John Meadows here, and today I got a really fun video. But before we get to that, gotta introduce a couple folks. So this is Chris Edmonds. Hopefully you've seen the protein ice cream video that we did with Chris. And you all know him as the homeless guy. That's me. <laughs> He's actually a retired banker. <laughs> um, you guys know Brent from the video. So today we're gonna to talk about three uh, chess strategies that you can use. Now, these aren't rocket science, but I think they're pretty cool. And actually for the last six, seven weeks, I've been using a version of this. So stay tuned. I think you're gonna find this video real interesting, give you some nice ideas and some things to try. First strategy I wanna talk about is utilizing different parts of the strength curve. Now, we hear people talking about that all the time. All it really means is that there's certain parts of the exercise that sometimes are harder than the other. You know, sometimes it's really hard to work the bottom half of an exercise. Sometimes the lockout can be pretty hard. It depends on what exercises you're doing and how they're set up. And one strategy that you can use is using different parts of the strength curve. And this isn't new, like this has been around for years. And the way it used to be in magazines was you had a mid-range part of the range of motion, then you had a top end, like a lockout, then you had like the beginning part of the range of motion. That's kind of the simple version of it. So what we did today was we used this prime hammer machine that allows us to do this. Now you may not have one of these, but I'm gonna explain to you how to simulate this. So on this prime machine, you'll notice there's three pegs on it. You'll notice the first set we did, we had weight on the middle. So that's the mid range part of the exercise. That's kind of the normal standard stress, the middle part of the range of motion. And then what we did was we did some sets with the weight on the bottom peg. And what happens when you're doing those is the weight is a lot easier out of the bottom, but it becomes harder to lock out. So you're working the top end of the range of motion where you're contracted. And then we finished with the weight on the top. So that is just the opposite. It's really hard to get the weight moving. It's really hard out of the bottom. Once you get it out of the bottom, the weight gets significantly lighter. So you're working kind of the beginning part of the range of motion. So now I know that 99% of you probably don't have a machine like that. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you a way to simulate this. So we're gonna pick three exercises that you could put into your chest routine. And one of them is gonna stress the mid-range part of the range of motion. One's gonna stress the beginning and one's gonna stress the end. So this is a way, it's a strategy you could just use to train your chest. And we've been using this actually a lot lately. Like I said, the last four or six weeks. So I think you're going to enjoy this. So now let's talk about three things you can do to simulate this. All right, now I know you don't have that prime machine, but here most people have some kind of seated press machine. This is a, a selectorized stack here. This would be good for the mid range part of the range of motion. So this would be a great way to start your chest workout. So it just start off with the machine, right? So this here, it's not overly heavy at the beginning or at the top. It's just a good smooth, uh, even distribution across the range of motion. So first thing is just find a normal machine like this. That's a great way to start. Um, you're gonna do something like three to four pretty hard sets here. All right, so now we wanna, we wanna move on to a top part of the range of motion exercise. And we're gonna use a floor press. To me, this is one of the most underrated exercises. I absolutely love these. Uh, we do them a lot for triceps in the powerlifting world, but they're also great for a chest contraction. So again, we're working the top half of the movement now. So we're gonna really work hard on this floor press. Now for your last exercise, you're gonna do something that really emphasizes the stretch. So the bottom part, really getting a real extreme stretch, good range of motion. You're gonna notice Chris is doing a tri set of three exercises. Now you don't have to do that. I just wanted to give you some options of exercises you can choose from. So you could use a dumbbell press, dumbbells are a lot of, it's a lot easier to get a more, more of a range of motion at the bottom with a dumbbell than a barbell, obviously. So you could do that. Or you could do a feet out in front dip. I have a little bit of a different style here when we do dips. It's more, more kind of Vince Garanda-esque um, where we put our feet out in front, let our elbows kind of travel out to the side. You'll notice Chris isn't coming up all the way. That's intentional. We're trying to work again the stretch. And then a cambered bar push-up is another option for you. So the goal in these is to Touch your chest to the camber. So that's the curve at the bottom of the, uh, the curve in the middle of the bar. So that'll allow you to open it up really good. So again, you don't have to do all three of these. Pick one that you really like and uh, that'll do it. So, so that's strategy number one. 
It's simply working different parts of the range of motion. Uh, the mid-range part, the top end, and the beginning of the stretch. And you know what? It's really fun. It's really fun. I think you'll enjoy this. So set up your workouts like this. Try some, try some of these. Three or four sets of exercise. Once every four or five days, you should be go. Now let's move on to strategy number two. Okay, so your next strategy is all around angles. This is another really fun way to train. So what you're gonna see us doing today is we're using various angles on the uh, dumbbell presses. So you're gonna see us use a slight incline, you're gonna see us use a, a, a slight decline and a flat angle. And as you do these, each angle actually feels really different. Even though we're not changing the angle that much, you'll notice it feels very, very different. So this is something else we've been doing that I really enjoy. So really what we've been doing is the strategy one I'll walk you through, we'll do that. And then we'll kind of do the angles that we're getting ready to talk about. We've been kind of been going back and forth and it feels really good. So you want to pick an angle. For, for us, we're starting with a slight incline. We have a plate underneath the, uh, one end of the bench that gives us a little bump in the incline. That to me is like the best angle for your chest. Now, I know a lot of people watching this are gonna say, well, that's more dictated by your elbow path and things like that, and that's right, absolutely it is. But changing these angles is really nice. So start off with a slight incline. That's gonna be your first angle. So we're gonna hit three to four sets. That's what your workout would be, three to four sets starting there. Okay, now we're gonna to move to the next angle, which is a slight decline. Those of you who have issues with your shoulders, this is like a miracle angle to take stress off your shoulders. So we took that plate that was underneath one end of the bench and we just moved it to the other end. So now we're on a slight decline. Um, same thing, three or four sets here. It'll <laughs> just change that angle that much. You're gonna feel like you're just gonna come flying off the bench, sliding off. But uh, a little different angle. Again, this is fun. I think you'll enjoy it. So three to four sets on a slight decline. By the way, I always like to give credit to Dorian Yates for these. Dorian Yates is the first one that I ever heard talk about a slight, slight decline. And I think he was right on the money. It's a great angle. Okay, now we're gonna go to a flat angle. So it's just a standard flat bench. So we did a slight decline, or no, slight incline, slight decline, now we're doing flat. And again, I know this looks like small angles, but wait till you do this. It feels totally different on each, each, each way you do this. So three or four sets here, and that'll cover three different angles for your chest. So real, real quick, before I move on to the third strategy, I was thinking about something on those angles. Like when I started lifting in the 80s, what we got in the magazines, all the workouts are really similar. It was a flat bench, it was an incline, it was a decline. So again, this is a rocket science I'm talking about here. It was a strategy that's been around for a long time. Now they used more barbells back then. Um, barbells, if you use this strategy, just be careful. That's a lot of beating on your uh, shoulder joint. Um, I like to do this strategy more with uh, dumbbells myself. But anyways, so I just wanted to mention that. I was thinking about the old Lee Haney and Arnold routines where they would do flat and inclined, then either decline or dips. Now the third strategy, I don't really need to show you an exercise. It's just, it's involved, it, it's, it, uh, it's around repetitions. So, you know, it's a 15 to 20, rep range it's a you know 10 to 15 rep range and it's a 6 to 10 rep range so you you know you can pick whatever exercises you want pick your three favorite exercises and a one of them work 15 to 20 one of them works 6 to, uh, 10 to 15 and then one of them works 6 to 10. Um, now there's um, there's some good reasoning for for mixing those reps up if you're always doing the six seven or eight it tends to get a little bit harder on your joints it tends to beat you up a little bit um, if you are using the higher rep range, let's say you're doing the 15 to 20, I want you to think about that logically. Like think about how much it burns and how hard it is to do a hard set of 20. And now imagine doing that over three exercises for all three of your sets. Let's say you do nine sets for chest. Imagine doing nine sets of 20 where every rep is hard. So to me, the lighter weight on the higher reps is actually probably even harder than the heavier weight for lighter reps because it's so tempting to quit when it starts burning, but you really get the benefit of the lighter weight of going to failure, so you get maximum activation out of your muscle fibers. Your muscle fibers uh, don't need to produce as much force with a lighter weight, so they're not engaged. All of them are not engaged, but as you fatigue, more get called into play. This is just basic science. This is nothing unique, just basic stuff. So I think it's good to mix the repetitions up. Now, 
How you do it, you can get pretty creative too. You could take a barbell exercise and instead of doing the heavy six, you could use the 15 to 20s for that. And then on something you might only do, or something you might do for like 20, maybe you do that for six to eight. So I would invite you to be creative with the exercises that you pick for the rep ranges. You could start off with the higher reps and then go medium and then go low. Or you could do the lower reps first. You could go your low reps and medium reps and your high reps. Again, that's up to you. Now, if you have joint issues, I would probably do the 15 to 20s first and then finish with some of your more compound barbell movements last for your sets of six because you're warmed up. Yeah, you may not do as much weight, but that's just fatigue. That's just fatigue. It doesn't mean you're weak. It just means your muscle fibers are tired. Um, if you're young and full of energy and you feel awesome, then you might go ahead and go real heavy, do the sixes first. Um, but that's another strategy that's very simple, involved in changing repetitions. Again, doing high repetitions all the time. I think it's a tough strategy to pull off. Doing the heavy stuff all the time, you can pull it off. I see all the guys on Instagram doing their sets of five and six, and guess what? Then they're messaging about how they tore their lat, they tore their quad, they tore their pec. So you can only handle so much of that. I want you guys to be smart. I want you to put some more thought into how you're structuring your reps. So those are really the three strategies uh, the different parts of the range of motion, the angles, and then the reps. Um, I think if you play around with these strategies, I think you're going to have a lot of fun. And I've always believed that the more fun you have, the more likely you are to be successful because you'll stick with it and you'll work hard. I know it's really tempting to do, you know, just whatever, just the flavor of the day and just do it forever. But um, be creative, uh, have some fun when you train, enjoy yourself, work hard. And that's it. We'll see you next time.